Hi everyone, it's Sarah here from Gluten-Free and Dairy-Free at Walt Disney World. Today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite ways to travel, and that's the Disney Cruise Line. Sailing away on a cruise is a great way to get away from it all, and with the Disney Cruise Line Cruise, it's a chance to enjoy the magic of Disney without stepping foot in the parks. But how is Disney Cruise Line with special dietary needs? Great news is that if you have food allergies, celiac disease like I do, or another special diet, you're going to be well taken care of and have a variety of options to enjoy while you're on a Disney cruise. In this video, we'll take a look at the top 10 tips for navigating a Disney cruise with special dietary needs. Number 10 on our list is to make sure to note your special dietary needs on your reservation. Even before you set sail, you can alert the Disney Cruise Line of your special dietary needs. Your online reservation form will accept a variety of special dietary needs, just like the ones that you'll find at Disney World Dining. Noting any special dietary needs on your reservation is an excellent way to make sure that the Disney Cruise Line cast members are well prepared for your cruise. If you're booking with a Disney vacation planner, like travel planner Mary Morales from Pixie Dusted Dreams and Events, they can assist you by noting the special dietary needs for you too. Number nine on our list is to check out reviews and blogs before you cruise. Reading reviews from fellow Special Diets cruisers is a great way to see what dining options you'll have on your upcoming Disney cruise. Bloggers like our friend Alexis from Alexis Gluten-Free Adventures have reviews of multiple cruise experiences, which can be a really great resource for tips, tricks, and dining suggestions. You can also read our gluten-free and special dietary needs dining experiences on my blog, Gluten-Free and Dairy-Free at Walt Disney World. In addition to covering gluten-free and dairy-free options, we also include Brandon's food allergy reviews, which include peanut, fish and shellfish, and chicken and turkey allergy-friendly options too. Number eight on our list is to check out the dining session on Embarkation Day. Now, depending on the Disney cruise you embark on, a select dining location will have a dining staff available on hand to answer any specific questions you have about dining on the cruise and to help making the adult dining if you haven't done so in advance prior to your cruise. Now, it's a really great spot to go to if you have questions, concerns, or you just want to chat with a cast member, this really is the place to go. For instance, on our most recent cruises on the Disney Dream, the dining session has been held in the early afternoon on Embarkation day at Enchanted Garden or Royal Palace and we've gone to those. We've actually been able to make special requests for specific food options at the session too. For instance, we asked for gluten-free fried brie from Royal Palace. We also were able to get gluten-free and dairy-free fried calamari and shrimp from Palo with some advance notice which was really great. Number seven on our list is to connect with your Disney head servers and servers. Unlike the Disney parks and resorts, your Disney cruise experience will include a team of assistant servers, servers, and head servers. Those are all three different kinds of staff members, and they'll be assigned to you for the duration of your cruise. That means that they're going to follow you around to all the, the main table service dining restaurants that you go to. Now, while they won't serve you at breakfast, except for on debarkation day, that's the day you leave your cruise, lunch, or at the adult dining locations, generally you're going to see all of those cast members at most of your meal experiences on your trip. Now, they'll get to know your special dietary needs, personal preferences, like they knew that I wanted iced tea anytime at my meal, and they're there to help answer any questions about your meal experience. Now, I highly recommend talking to them as much as possible in order to get not only customized dishes, but any specialty items that you're interested in. For instance, I asked my servers about Indian food, which I knew was something you might be able to get upon request, and I was able to on our cruises, which was really awesome. Now, number six on our list is to make adult dining reservations. Now, because a cruise ship serves a large amount of people, Sometimes the rotational dining meal options for special diets guests can feel a little uninspired or a bit plain depending on your special dietary need. However, adult dining is a terrific option for guests looking for a more customized and unique special diets meal options. 
We've dined at both Paolo and Remy on the Disney Dream and absolutely love the experiences. In fact, Remy is hands down the best meal we have ever had anywhere. And both Paolo and Remy offer brunch and dinner options depending on the length of your cruise. And adult dining experiences do have a monetary upcharge, so they're not included in your Disney Cruise vacation price. So they're typically anywhere from $40 to a little over $100 per person depending on the restaurant. Now, number five on our list is to bring your own snacks, drinks, and treats. Disney Cruise Line's policy allows prepackaged and sealed food and beverage to be brought aboard the Disney Cruise Line ships. Now, if you're like us, we do like to have a few treats here and there. We also like to be really prepared just in case there aren't options. So we do occasionally bring our favorite special diet snacks or treats with us on the cruise. Now, if you're interested in bringing your own special dietary friendly alcohol, like gluten-free beer, you can do that too. There are some limitations and restrictions, so do take note of any of those limits that the Disney Cruise Line has currently for bringing such items aboard the ship. On number four on our list is ordering meals in advance with your server. And this can be a good and a bad thing, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Now, the Disney Cruise Line cast members do often encourage guests who have special dietary needs to order their meals in advance. And this just means the day before or the evening before an experience, you're going to be ordering your meals, picking out what you'd like to eat before you dine. And that way, your server staff and the chefs are ready for you and can prepare some special dietary needs options, especially if something needs a modification. Now, in our opinion, this can be a really great thing. We've had some really good experiences with this and a not so great thing depending on the occasion. Now, here's why. Now, ordering meals, like I said, do typically happen in advance the night before you dine at a location. And while it often ensures that your meal's ready when you get there, which is really handy, no need to make a lot of arrangements to wait, Sometimes it means your meal might be a little bit bland. Now this isn't always the case, but we have experienced that on Castaway Key, Disney's private island. So your best bet is to consult with your server team when you pre-order, especially if you're having difficulties deciding what to order the night before, to ensure that you're happy with any pre-order options that you get. We also recommend that if you're a special dietary needs guest visiting Castaway Key, that you do pre-order your food um, and dine at the main Cookies Barbecue Dining location because they have the most special dietary needs options and ability to accommodate. Other locations that we've been at, like Serenity Bay Barbecue, may have limited options for special dietary needs guests and can't accommodate pre-orders. So if you're pre-ordering, you're definitely going to Cookies Barbecue. Number three on our list is to take care of buffets. Now on embarkation day and at locations like Cabana's and Cookies Barbecue on Castaway Key, you'll be faced with buffet options. Now always double check with a Disney cast member to ensure that you have safe options for your special dietary needs. We personally prefer to avoid buffets, especially on embarkation day, that's the day you arrive on your Disney cruise, just because we have multiple dietary restrictions between the two of us, and we don't like waiting for a long period of time, which can sometimes happen at a buffet. And so we've chosen to eat at more full service dining locations. On embarkation day on the Disney Dream, for example, you can dine at Animator's Palette for an a la carte lunch there. If you do dine at buffets, of course, you can always ask members of the culinary team, uh, servers, head servers, for example, to prepare your food in the kitchen directly to minimize the risk of cross-contamination, and we definitely recommend this. Now, when in doubt, ask for fresh items from the kitchen, and we also recommend that guests dining at buffets be prepared to wait a little bit longer than normal for your food if they're being prepared in the kitchen for you. And even getting prepackaged food, in my experience, has taken some time. For instance, we've gotten gluten-free and dairy-free donuts and muffins in the morning, and it usually takes about 20 to 30 minutes to get that whenever we get it from Cabanas. So just keep that in mind. Now, number two on our list is to enjoy room service and snacks throughout the ship. Now, as a special dietary needs guest, you can actually take advantage of room service options just as safely as you would throughout the other ship's dining locations. When ordering, do make sure that you consult with a room service cast member for assistance with safe items. Now, if you're only gluten-free, for example, you might be able to get the cheese plate, minus the crackers, or with the addition of gluten-free crackers, we've been able to get those. And those can be a great protein-packed snack 
great for just hanging out on your veranda or chilling in your room with a Disney movie. Now, if room service is not your thing, there are plenty of areas to pick up snacks along the way. Our personal favorite is the popcorn for purchase near the theater locations on any of the Disney Cruise Line ships. You don't have to be attending a show to purchase popcorn, and it's the exact same popcorn that you can buy in the Disney parks and resorts, which is gluten-free, dairy-free, and vegan, and so delicious. You can bet we've taken this to our room or chilled with this uh, in a nice relaxing area for an evening snack on more than one occasion. And there's also lots of other snacks and room service options for guests with special dietary needs that you can take advantage of on your cruise. So definitely do some food exploration while you're on that cruise. Number one on our list is to plan ahead in case you have tummy troubles or allergic reactions. Now between seasickness and potential gluten, if you have celiac disease, which is always a risk, especially when we dine outside of our homes, it's always a good idea to have safe and soothing stomach relief on hand. Now whether you have medications that help or a nice natural product like candy ginger, it's always a good idea to bring those remedies with you that you use at home. Now bring the items that you know that work best for you. And of course, if you have food allergies that require EpiPens or other medication, do make sure to bring that with you in case of emergencies. Now, we have Brandon's AviQ auto injectors and Benadryl with us when we go on the Disney cruise because of his allergies. And of course, you can always speak with cast members in the onboard medical facilities too and visit them in case of emergencies. Now, these are just a few of my top tricks and tips for having a magical and safe cruise experience on the Disney Cruise Line with special dietary needs, but I'd love to hear from you. What are your best tips and tricks for navigating the Disney Cruise Line with celiac disease, food allergies, or other special dietary needs? Now share what you think in the comment section and tell us what you love about the Disney Cruise Line. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more food and theme park videos. If you want to help support gluten-free and dairy-free at Walt Disney World, you can help support us by becoming a patron on Patreon too. For now, thanks for listening and we'll see you with another Disney video real soon.